Hello, thanks for watching. This is Jake with Myers Flies, and today I'm going to be tying up a little pattern that I came up with, um, I don't know, a year or two ago. Uh, it's a little, my imitation of like a March Brown nymph. Uh, you can also fish as well as a sulfur nymph. It's a really easy pattern to tie. I catch a lot of fish with this uh, year round, but you know, specifically in the early part of the year, you know, when the sulfurs, uh, March browns, things like that are coming off. Or even if you need a light pattern, you know, just something light to match a, a light nymph. This is not weighted. You'll see it's just the thread. I usually fish this as my little tag dropper. And so uh, what I'll do is in the Euro nymphing leader system that I have, I do a real heavy anchor fly. And then about two foot up from that, 20 inches up from that, I tie on a little six inch, four inch tag. And so this would actually ride up a little higher in the water column as you know, a nymph, uh, you know, just a little bit higher in the water column. And so it's not weighted, so you need something to get it down. You could weight it. You could put some lead underneath of there. But I like to fish it just, uh, just as it is. Also, I'll throw this underneath of a dry fly. And so you could do like a dry dropper with this. So uh, anyhow, that's the fly. And I uh, had some folks asking about, about this, so we'll tie it up here for you quick it's not uh it's not real difficult this is the uh 633 633 fire hole hook this is just like a wet nymph hook and uh i'm gonna put a little bit of thread on here here's a little bit of just utc 140 in brown that's the ultra thread and so i'm going to start this you know back off the eye about two eye lengths and just wrap that back you can use 70 denier for this uh, this is a size 14 so if I was going to tie it smaller than this I would definitely go with like a 70 denier thread and so then I'm just going to take some just some brown just standard uh, pheasant tail and take about five Four or five of those little fibers. We want like a body length there sticking off the back. A lot of times I take this underneath of the back, underneath the back, and then it kind of helps splay those out a little bit. I just kind of wrap this back up to the tie-in point. <clears throat> I'm going to take a little bit of wire here, the brassy size in the gold UTC ultra wire. I'm going to tie that in there as well. And I'm doing this on the far side of the hook. It would be the far side of the hook to me, but it's to your side as you're watching it. I'm not going to counter rib this. If I would, I would have put it on the other side to the near side towards me, but uh, I like it to kind of sink down into the into the body of the fly a little bit. The dubbing that I'm using here, sorry about that, is uh, is Hairtron, uh, the Golden Stone dubbing from Hairline. I just like that color. Uh, it's got a really nice color too. I I tie this my uh, Golden Stone flies as well. I use this same dubbing for that uh, some sulfur nymphs I mean it's uh, you can use the sulfur orange you know for more of a sulfur uh, type color but I'll tell you this as, as like a generic pattern that you're going to do you know fishing it for March browns and sulfurs this does really well so I'm going to keep that real thin on there that's just a real thin uh, portion of this you know this dubbing and then I'm gonna come back through and again I'm not counter wrapping I'm just going the same way it's gonna sit down in that that dubbing for me I'm gonna tie that off 
right up here at the front. Helicopter my wire off. Now sometimes your thread will get a little knotted up, a little wound tight. I just counter spin this, you know, just spin it a little bit. That'll kind of unwrap the thread with this ultra thread and it lays down, <clears throat> lays down flat. So I'm going to take some more of this same, same color, but instead now I'm going to use a little bit more. So I'm probably, you know, again, probably eight to 10 fibers, you know, that I'm going to pull off here. And I like to always come back and snip these little, snip those little curlies off the back. <clears throat> Then I'm going to position this with the underside, and you know this is preference, but the underside of that of that feather, you know, you got the the top side, which is your nice barring, real nice finished look, and then you've got the underside of the feather. I usually take that and put that up, so that whenever I fold these back, I have the top part of the of the feather. And then I'm going to come in here, about like so. That's not far enough. You want these to stick out just enough, and it's a little bit different each time uh, because, you know, depending on what size hook you're using, I'm going to wrap that back right to the right to the point, right to the point there. <clears throat> but. Uh, yeah, just depend, depending on the size of the hook, and then that way when you fold it back, you know, you want it to come eh, to about where the barb would be or so. And then I'm going to hold that right there, and I'm going to stick a little bit more of this dubbing on here. Again, keep it thin. You don't need much, just, just enough to cover up the thread, really. <clears throat> With this dubbing, that's my Boston Terrier that's barking there. I guess the rest of the family just got home. And just keep it thin. Now we got that wrapped up. Just take your thumb right here and you're just going to push these back. And I just try to divide them about in half. So you have, you know, equal amounts on either side. I mean, it's not an exact science. I don't know that the trout are down there counting how many little legs are on each side. I think it has something to do probably more so with the uh, fly fisherman that the fly looks exactly perfect. I think we get a little more fussy than they do. And that is it. I want to do a five turn whip finish there. Then I'll do one more. And then I'll usually take a little bit of head cement, you know, put on there. So as you can see, that's all that's to this. A lot of times what I'll do is just take a, like a little brown, brown Sharpie marker and just right up on top here, just like a couple little dots, like a little line, just right up top there. It just kind of puts a little brown right on the top. They're usually a little darker on the top than they are on the bottom. <clears throat> but there it is guys. It is a very simple fly to tie but it has been very effective. Uh, very effective for me and so uh, you can mix up the colors you know and uh, try different uh,
probably different colors as well you know so hey check it out uh, we also sell these if you don't tie them we sell them on our website at myersflies.com and uh, you know if you want something else tied uh, just shoot me a message and I'll try to do a video uh, but look us up on the website at myersflies.com and then also subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, follow us on Instagram and share it uh, you know with your friends and just trying to be a help so uh, tight lines good luck on the water